you died on a Saturday morning and I had you placed here under our tree. I had that house, your father's, bulldozed to the ground. You know, Mama always said dying was part of life, but I sure wish it wasn't. And Lil Force, he doing just fine. He about to start school again soon. Or make his breakfast, lunch and dinner every day. Make sure he combs his hair, brushes his teeth every day. I'm teaching him how to play ping pong and he real good. We fish a lot. And every night we read a book. And he's so smart, Jenny. You'll be so proud of him. He, uh, he wrote you a letter. He says, I can't read it. I'm not supposed to. So I'll just leave it here for you. Hello folks, welcome to the playlist for monologues and different readings, cold readings, because I am trying to be an actor, you know, I do want to be in TV and film one day, uh, but that's just a small piece of the pie. I'm on my way to being the world's greatest storyteller, and it's not just by telling stories on TV and film and on camera, but it's about living every day as a story. I believe that there is a divine director above. He kind of he allows everything to happen for his reason and his purpose. So right now I'm doing a cold reading <coughs> from a movie I saw, uh, and maybe you'll figure it out. <coughs> Let me get into character. Here we go. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Zip, zap, zop, zop, whip, whap, bup. Hey, ya. Ho, ho. Hey, ya. Ho, ho. Why shouldn't I work for the NSA? <laughs> That's a tough one but I'll give it a shot. Say I'm working at the NSA. Somebody puts a code on my desk. Hey, and it's something nobody else can break. So I take a shot at it and maybe I break it. And I'm really happy with myself because I did my job well, you know? But maybe that code was the location of some rebel army in North Africa or in the Middle East. And once they have that location, they bomb the village where the rebels were hiding, and 1,500 people I never had a problem with get killed. Now the politicians are saying, send in the Marines to secure the area, because they don't give a shit. I, it won't be their kids out there getting shot, just like it wasn't theirs when their number got called, because they were pulling a duty in the National Guard. It'll be the same guy, some guy from Southie, taking shrapnel in his ass, and he comes home to find out that the plant he used to work at got exported to the country he just got back from. And the guy who put the shrapnel in his ass just took his job because he'll work for 15 cents a day and no bathroom breaks. Meanwhile, my buddy from Saudi realizes the only reason he was over there in the first place was so that we could install a government that would sell us good oil at a fair price. And of course, the oil companies... They start to squirmish to scare up some oil prices so they could turn a quick buck, a cute little ancillary benefit for them, but it ain't helping my buddy at two fifty a gallon. And naturally, they're taking their sweet time bringing the oil back, maybe even took the liberty of hiring an alcoholic skipper who likes to drink martinis and play solemn with icebergs. And it ain't too long before he hits one, spills the oil, and kills all the sea life in the North Atlantic. So now my buddy's out of work and I, he can't afford to drive. So he's got to walk to the job interview. And that sucks because the shrapnel he took in his ass is giving him chronic hemorrhoids. And meanwhile, he's starving because every time he tries to get a bite to eat, the only plate they're special they have is serving North Atlantic cod with Quaker steak. So what do I think? I'm holding out for something better. Why not just shoot my buddy take his job, give it to a sworn enemy, hike up gas prices, bomb a village, club a baby seal, hit the hash pipe, and join the National Guard. I could be elected president.
there's terror in the night. When the light slips away, I feel the terror. That's why I don't go. Don't go. Don't, don't leave me. Don't leave me alone. There's terror in the night. Like something no one can imagine. Only me. It doesn't matter what I think or do. I can't get away from the terror. So don't go. Because the sun's going down. They let me move up and down the corridors late at night. But I'm not allowed to scream. The nurses are kind. Some are beautiful. They look at me with their carefree eyes, oblivious of what I feel. I promised them that I wouldn't scream, but sometimes I have to scream out loud. It's better than screaming on the inside. It hurts more when you scream on the inside. When I fought in the war, the children screamed. And those that were left cried in the night. But it didn't matter because nobody heard them but me. The woman screamed when the bullets ripped their stomachs open. One stomach had a baby inside. The old men fell over quietly. When I didn't see the blood, I used to make my, myself believe that they died of old age. Uh, I was all right when I came back. You remember? I was all right for years until... Until I saw that terror lurking in the night. And in the darkness, I could see all their eyes staring at me like little flashlights that burned into my skin and made me feel their pain. There's terror in the night. And some night, I will scream even though I'm not supposed to. I'll be like that little boy that I killed. That little boy who suddenly appeared and scared me. Funny, isn't it? A little boy scared me. And now, he haunts my nights. Because when he fell, he looked at me as if he forgave me. But I can't forgive. So don't you see? I can't get away from the terror. Because the terror that comes every night is me.